I'm standing at the front of my newly acquired 1980 Mercedes 300D. This is a diesel. And these are the cars, folks, that have been known to go a million miles. That's right, a million miles. You may see that in ads like on Craigslist or on eBay. Yeah, man, this diesel will go a million miles. Now, I'm not going to disagree that this car wouldn't go a million miles, but I think when people hear that, it does a disservice to the owners because I think owners think, well, if it's going to go a million miles, why bother to do anything to it? They'll go a million miles, folks, but you have to maintain them. And what I want to share with you is three ways that you can kill one of these diesel engines slowly. Now, you probably know a couple of ways to kill it rapidly, but killing it slowly, well, this can kind of sneak up on you. Poor spraying injectors, I'm learning, are one of the biggest causes in the slow death of these diesel engines. If you're in injectors are just soaking the cylinder walls down, you're going to have increased piston ring and cylinder wall wear and your engine will not go a million miles. And I think that's something that a lot of people neglect that own these cars because the engine keeps running. Even if the fuel injectors are squirting instead of spraying, the engine will keep running. You may smoke, you may get poor fuel economy, you may have lost power, but it keeps going so people keep driving it. And I think that's one of the downsides of this thinking that these things will just go a million miles. They're so reliable that you don't even need to maintain them. If you've been following this series, you may be wondering why I've chosen faulty fuel injectors as the third way that you could kill a diesel engine slowly. From what I'm seeing today, because these cars are so old, I think because a lot of owners hear that these engines will go a million miles, they may be under the false assumption that the fuel injectors will go a million miles, and that is just not so. I don't care what kind of maintenance you do on the engine. I don't care what kind of fuel additives you use. The fuel injectors will not last that long. They're a critical wear item. And when the fuel injectors start to wear out, the spray pattern changes, the timing could change the point of delivery, you start washing the cylinder walls down, that lowers the compression, as, as the compression lowers in the engine, you get less fuel burn and the cylinder walls wash down even more and eventually you get excessive piston ring and cylinder wall wear leading to poor combustion, hard starting, poor fuel economy, a lot of smoke. You see some of these diesels going down the road, you know, blowing black smoke out. I bet, you, I bet you if you check the fuel injectors, you'll probably figure out why. So what I want to do in this video is prove my point. Some of you may be thinking, well, I'm not so sure that this is that important. But what I've done here is I've just pulled the five fuel injectors out of my 300D, the blue 300D that you saw earlier in this video. And I've got them up here on the bench. I've got a couple other fuel injectors that I've pulled out of other engines. And I've got my trusty fuel injection pressure tester. You know, I really feel if you're going to be a diesel owner of these old Mercedes diesels with mechanical fuel injection, this is rapidly becoming a must-have tool. You know, if you pull your fuel injectors out and take them into some Bosch service center, you'll pay more to have them tested than you will for this unit. And then you can use this yourself to keep track of your injectors and even rebuild them during your term of ownership. So this has proven to be a very, very handy tool if you want your Mercedes diesel to go a million miles. So I'm gonna start out by showing you the injectors and showing you the tips and explaining a little theory here. I need to explain some theory because if you don't understand the theory, of diesel engines and fuel injectors, you're not gonna understand why this can become such a big problem if you just ignore your fuel injectors. I'm gonna show you a fuel injector in this video that will kind of shock you. And I've seen a lot of these come out of these engines recently, once again, because they're getting so old with such high mileage. If you look closely, you can see I've cleaned the carbon off all the tips on these five injectors. And if you look at the flat face of the nozzle, you can see it's fairly flat. There may be just a slight amount of wear right around the tip. Now I've said before that often you can tell by looking at the tip and the wear around that pintle there whether or not the fuel injector is worn out. Well, that may or may not be the case and I'm gonna show you that later on. But these five injectors look pretty good. This one has a little bit of wear right here but I want to show you one I pulled out of another engine. See if you can see that. See the amount of wear, see the ridge there? What causes this is that fuel will leak out of that tip while the engine's running and it will burn around that area just inside the heat shield washer 
and it'll actually eat the metal away over time. But once again, that's only a visual check. You really need a bench mount tester if you're going to properly test the injectors. You're never gonna know for sure, and now I'm going to show you why. I will start out by taking one of these 300D injectors and testing it. Then I'm gonna test this one here, look at this one. You would swear by looking at this one that it's probably almost brand new at least. The nozzle's been replaced because there's no marks, not even from the heat shield washer. So this one should test very well. This one that has the wear in the face of the nozzle probably will spray poorly. And you know, these I think will be okay. We won't know though. Once again, we won't know until we test each one. We could have one that's stuck it's not hardly spraying at all, maybe just squirting. So watch as I test these. I think I'll go ahead and just start out with one of these out of the 300D. We'll use that as a benchmark, and then we'll test these other two. There are two things you're gonna wanna watch closely as I pressure test this number one injector out of the 300D. I want you to watch the gauge. This gauge is marked in PSI, and this is a non-turbo fuel injector, so we're expecting it to release pressure about 1600 to 1650 PSI. That's critical, you wanna watch that. At the same time, we wanna watch the spray pattern. Now, I know it's a little difficult to see here because I'm using my fume capture bottle. Let me tell you, you do not wanna be breathing the fumes that come out of these injectors. It's such a fine mist and it's not good for your health. So I always use a capture bottle and you can see this hose. I've got this 10 foot hose venting out a window here in the shop. Now I really like the gauge that we include with my tester. The first thing it's liquid fills so the needle doesn't bounce, gives you very accurate readings. The second thing is it has large distances between the markings. So every mark is 50 PSI. Some gauges are very hard to read. So we come up here to 1500, 1600, so the third mark over is 1650. So watch closely as I bring the pressure up. We'll wanna check release pressure first. Okay, there it's 1500, 1600. Look at that, right about 1650. And look at how it's spraying, see that? It's just a quick pulsation and a quick, very fine spray. Let me move the camera in and see if you can see that spray pattern. This ejector is testing very well. Okay, watch the spray pattern coming out of the tip as I bring it up to 1650 PSI. You hear that chirp? That's very healthy to hear that little chirp sound. And notice it's a very, very fine mist, but it has a nice cone pattern. It's not spraying way out to the side. The next injector I'm gonna test for you is a turbo diesel injector. It has a higher pressure release than the non-turbos. We should be expecting it to release between 1900 and 1950 PSI if it's operating properly. Now this is the one that had the wear in the tip, that had the concave wear pattern around the pintle in that nozzle. So let's bring this one up to pressure and see when it releases and also watch the spray pattern at the same time. Okay, we're up to 1850, 19, 1950, look at that, still not spraying, 2000, 2050, 2100, 2150, oh man, look at that, it's spraying at about 20, and it's not real consistent either. It's kind of jumping a little bit. Now notice the spray pattern here, it's too narrow. It's almost squirting. It's not too bad, but if you look closely, it doesn't have a nice cone to it. It's just coming straight out. And you'll also notice that it's putting a lot of fuel in the bottom of the bottle. That's another thing you wanna be watching is actually how much fuel is coming out of the nozzle. So that's quite a bit of fuel. We've got it releasing at 2100. You might be thinking, well, why is that bad? I'll explain that in a minute. But you have two problems here, too high a release pressure, and you've got too much fuel coming out of the nozzle. The last injector I'm going to test for you is this one that looks virtually brand new. You can see there's literally no marks, even from the heat shield washer, no wear at all in this nozzle. So this one should test uh, very well. Let's see what happens.
1950 is what we're looking for. Pressure's coming up right there, 1500, 16, 17. What? This is a turbo diesel injector. <laughs> Look at that. It's releasing. Notice what happens when it is releasing. See, it drops down 150 PSI, and now look at how it's spraying. It's not spraying at all. <laughs> it's just squirting. And look at the amount of fuel that's coming out of there, because this thing isn't even spraying. Even if I pump it real hard, you can see it squirting off the side. Now, what I'm going to do, because it's so hard to see, I'm going to pull this fume capture bottle off, and I'm going to show you just how badly this injector is spraying. You won't believe it, even though it looked like it was in excellent condition. Now this should be a real eye-opener to a lot of you, especially some of you might be a little skeptical about what I'm trying to prove here, but watch this. Can you believe that? Can you imagine that squirting down in your engine when it's coming up on compression stroke, goes in the pre-chamber and literally just washes the cylinder walls down so you lose all the lubrication on your piston ring. This right here, folks, is what I'm talking about. I think after seeing the results of those tests, I think you'll understand why I feel this is such an important aspect to the health and longevity of a diesel engine. If you want peak performance, best fuel economy, and long engine life, I really believe that the fuel injectors should be removed every 60 to 80,000 miles and cleaned and tested. You can't believe how sometimes things can happen to these fuel injectors. Any little speck of dirt gets in those injectors that can score them. You can get injector nailing, which is that loud rattling at idle or at startup. So this is something, folks, you just don't want to ignore. And I think a lot of people ignore it. This is kind of the subtle number three way to kill a diesel engine slowly. And I think it's due in part to lack of understanding, lack of knowledge and the assumption that the fuel injectors will just keep going and going and going. Now, it doesn't end at fuel injector nozzles, okay? We've got a couple other issues, and one of them is injection timing. You know, if your injection pump timing is off, let's say your chain has stretched, and that makes the timing get off a few degrees, that means the spraying is going on at the wrong moment. Even though the injectors may be spraying properly, your timing's off, which will further cause wash down of the cylinder walls because you won't get complete burn of the fuel. And that's what can happen when you have an injector that's set to release at like 2100 or 2200 PSI. I think some people think, well, I'll just crank the pressure up here, you know, and then they'll spray better. Well, not so, because if you get the pressure release too high, it retards the timing. Are you following me here? That means it's gonna spray a little late through the combustion cycle of the engine. And of course, if your injectors are releasing too early or at such a low pressure, you'll also affect timing and further reduce the fuel burn cycle, okay? So I hope you understand this is just kind of a vicious cycle, because once you start washing down the cylinder walls, that reduces reduces the viscosity of the oil, which further reduces compression, which in turn further increases wear, and it just goes on and on and on. And this is why this is so important. It may be even more important than making sure your air filter housing doesn't have any air leaks, okay? <laughs> Number one is obviously the most important, but that's kind of obvious to everyone. And I think number three is not so obvious. So that's why I wanted to share this with you in this video. And one other thing I want to mention, when you buy rebuilt injectors, you still, that's correct, you still need to test them. You can't believe how many rebuilt injectors I've seen, even Bosch manufactured rebuilt injectors that are not adjusted properly from the factory. They're off a little bit. Now this one here looked new. Maybe somebody rebuilt this and rebuilt it improperly. So when you go to buy rebuilt fuel injectors, especially in places like eBay or people are rebuilding these things, you really need to have one of these because you will never know what you're getting. So my recommendation to you is if you're gonna own one of these diesels and enjoy it for a long time, you need to have one of these, you need to learn how to use it and you need to stay on top your fuel injectors if you want your diesel to go a million miles.